why are you waiting for somebody else to believe in you and to have more control? You got to gamble on yourself. You got to know that, hey, listen, when I gamble on myself, I have the utmost confidence. I know what the outcome is going to be. Put your health in your own hands. Put winning in your, in your own grasp. Don't wait for somebody else to, don't wait for somebody else to hand it to you. You have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in your abilities. Not only do you have to believe in them, you have to work in them. You have to excel in them. You have to understand them. If you're not willing to gamble on yourself, I'm not willing, I'm not gonna gamble on you. There's, there's no there's no way. I'm not I'm not gonna gamble on you. You have to kill your current self for your new self to have room to grow. And so it's this constant appraisal of your skills and activities and saying, which of these makes me stronger? Which of these makes it more likely for me to hit my goal? And I just wanna give you that frame because that like that single frame of, is this person being in my life make it more likely or less likely that I hit my goal? Is this activity or this behavior that I do make it more or less likely that I hit my goal? And I consistently just ask that question over and over and over again. And that is because for me, I do love my goals more than I love my friend because my goals will be with me long after they are. And so if you think about your relationship with your goals and you put it on the same pedestal or higher than your relationship with your friends, you're going to lose one of the relationships. And the question is, which one is the one that's gonna serve you more in the long term? That's a decision for you. But for me, I can tell you personally, achieving my goals has served me more than any one person has. And because achieving your goals is a generalized thing, it can open all doors to new relationships. And so you do have to burn sometimes what you have in order to have what you want. The winners focus on winning, yeah. losers focus on winners. Yeah. That's reality. And dude, this is something that people just can't get through their head. They want everything to be fucking fair. It is not ever going to be fair, ever. There are going to be people that are better looking than you. There are going to be people that have better genetics than you. There are going to be people that are smarter than you. They're going to have, have people that have more money than you or grew up in a better family or have more advantages or have more opportunities. So what? Okay, it's your job to assess where are you and then take the action to get where you want to go, regardless of where you start, regardless of where someone else starts. And so many people tell themselves this ridiculous story about all these advantages that other people have, when in reality, a lot of times, these people didn't even have those advantages. So it becomes a, vict a self-victimizing story that people tell. So if you want to become healthy, you don't do things that unhealthy people do. Why? Because you're not positioning yourself for that which you want. So you need to tune your frequency to the things that you want. So if you want something in life, first you have to think of, think about it. Secondly, you have to work on it. And third, you have to allow that to become part of your nature. So if you want anything in life, first you have to know what you want. Two is you have to position yourself, become that which you want before, before you are, and naturally you'll attract it. And three, understand that you get in life what you deserve and you get in life what you think about. So if you want something, you need to think about it clearly and your actions will determine who you become. You're a byproduct of your thoughts. If you have low vibrational thoughts, if you're thinking about negative things, that's what you're going to attract. But if you think about positive things, if you think about abundance, if you think about winning, if you think about self-development, if you think about purpose, if you think about helping others, you're going to attract those opportunities and those experiences naturally because you've positioned yourself to receive that. So one of the things that you guys need to do if you feel like you're, if you're not moving forward in life and if you have this kind of thought process that, oh, it's probably not gonna work so I might as well not bother. If you fall into that category, this is what you need to do. And this is another cognitive reframe. And it's to shift from being action, I mean, to being outcome oriented to action oriented. So don't focus on the outcome of your action. Don't focus on the grade. Try to focus on what you actually learn. Try to focus on what you're doing, not what you're getting. The reason why certain people in the wor world are respected and admired at the level that they are is because so many people fail. Because mm. when the pressure hits, most people leave the arena. Mm. We all root for the people in the arena and we criticize them. What we don't recognize is the fact that whoever is in the arena getting their asses handed to them 
at least they had the courage to get in the arena. Mm. They're not fans on the outside. They're in the arena fighting. Those are the people we admire. If you go outside and it starts raining and you decide to quit and go inside, the work doesn't get done. But if you go outside and it starts raining and you continue to do the work and you get it all done and it's still raining, what difference does it make? Because you still move forward regardless of the circumstances. And I think once you can figure out how to continue to move forward regardless of what the circumstances are or whatever it is going on in your life, which is very simple because continuing to move forward only takes, you know, three to five real critical tasks every single day. And if you can move forward continuously, even in the hard times, and you don't quit, how can you lose? You can't lose. Most, most people, the bottom 80% are lazy. Um, and it's something that it's not polite to talk about. But most people are lazy. And they're looking for an easy way. They're looking for a shortcut to be successful. And there, are not, there aren't any. But if you do something repeatedly over and over, you develop a habit. So most people are in the habit of looking for easy ways to get the things they want. And they're surrounded by people who think the same way. Mm. You know, as much as 95% of your thinking is determined by the people that you associate with on a regular basis. If you associate with people who don't, do, don't work hard, don't learn, socialize after work, then you become like them. You think like them, you talk like them, you dress like them, you marry them. And so you're married to someone who also has no ambition. And you raise children, and your children have no ambition. Just go to work and complain about your work. But top people associate with other top people. You all have this, and all of us, have this conflict going on at all times inside of us. And it's between two forces. And the first force is your survival instinct that's been with us for thousands, if not tens of thousands of years. And this is the thing that, you know, that, that noise in the bushes that was, could, could possibly kill you, it wants to inject into you fear and doubt and worry and anxiety. It wants you to fight or flight. And, and that's, your, that's kind of your voice of fear and your inner critic. And that's really loud. That voice is in your mind all the time. And then there's another voice, the second voice. And that voice has been written about and talked about by philosophers for thousands of years. And that voice has been called many names. It's been called your intuition. It's been called source, God, the universe, your soul, your true self, you know, your inner wisdom, lots of voice names for that. That voice is a little quieter. And that voice isn't in your head. A lot of times it shows up in your body. It shows up in your heart, your gut, your, you know, your chest, you feel that. And unfortunately, that first voice really drowns us out a lot of times. And the thing is that the voice of fear will lead you to a life that's too small. And you know this. You already know this. And the reason you, the way that you know this is you feel this. You know, you feel this conflict, this dissonance and tension when you're in that position, when you're doing something that's too small. If you want to reach full power in this one life of yours, it's in the second voice. It's in the voice that's the real you. This contains your dreams, your path, it contains your energy. And when you stop denying who you really are, you, there's, there's really no end to what you can accomplish.